dear sewing friends, step here, slap happy sewing. <laughs> Okay, so I have been working part-time for a few weeks now and I can honestly say that it has not made me, I have not spent my spare time being much more creative and in fact I haven't got an enormous amount of completed projects to show you but I thought you might be interested in the things that I've been uh, thinking about. Okay, so it's winter as you can see weather is cold uh, my outfit is a cashmere -it, what is it it's a concord i think it's a long sleeve concord and there's this upcycled charity shop uh waistcoat that i put put a bit of webbing in because it wasn't really big enough around the tummy and oh and even the trousers are upcycled they are um these trousers, they're very, very warm actually, and um, they're good for the winter for, for that reason, but the waist on them was a bit tight and it's got those big, thick elastic. So I actually just snipped the elastic in a few places and sort of let it out a bit. And it's they're so much more comfortable now. That might be a bit too much information, but hey, whatever. All right, um, yeah, so the weather is very, very cold. As you can see, even Big Puss, Anytime there's a heater on, he's right in front of it. <laughs> um, I've, I've been having a little phase actually of wearing quite a few dresses. So I've worn my cashmere Upton pinafore um, because it's great actually. It's a big heavy dress and it's got, you know, if you wear a jumper with it, it's, uh, and then a cardigan over the top, very good. Um, really enjoying my snag tights. <laughs> Show you here. <laughs> oh yes I want to show you I, I have been looking at these Ellie and Mac hoodie patterns that I bought uh, there's a few different ones anyway I'll put them up on the screen um yeah um but actually I felt I know there was a petal top as well and I almost managed to get a petal top cut out of various different stripes and spots and all in navy and white but then I'd need some plain navy fabric to go with it so I put that little project aside. Yeah, I found actually, although these things were supposed to be scrap busters, you actually need more fabric than you think. So I'm go I've got some footage, which I'm gonna cut away to. I bought a few knits. I'm gonna show you one that I made. I, it wasn't the true thing. I basically just made a big size and just made it straight and it's come out a bit big, but you'll see. It's kind of fun anyway. Hi everyone, just want to show you a little bit of fabric that I picked up. Um, I bought it from Spotlight from their clearance section and uh, they've got an offer on at the moment if you buy at least three metres you they will give you a uh, half price so actually it ended up being very very cheap and then I'm kind of tempted to go back in and buy some more now as you know I have stashed up quite a bit by buying fabric from uh, somebody on our version of eBay, which is Trade Me. Um, I found a person locally who was de-stashing. She's an elderly lady who's going out of sewing. She must have been a professional sewer. And I have bought loads of fabric. If you want to see it all, it will be in my previous videos. But most of it, in fact, 99% of it is actually plain which is fine because plain fabric's really useful and I make a lot of plain clothes and I wear a lot of plain clothes. However, which I, you know, I've been trying to sort of think, okay, well I can maybe use up some of my scraps and I went to cut out the petal top and found that I just, it's funny because you think you've got a lot of scraps, but actually when you try and put a pattern piece on it, you've got, obviously it's got to be the right way round and all. Um, also found, so, so yeah, so I thought, well, you know, I think I'm going to have to, get past the fact that I probably can't use these scraps, they probably are too small. And But I would like to have a go at some of these tops, like these these ones I bought from Ellie and Mac in their Wacky Wednesday, so for a dollar. Um, but you can see they need a mixture of fabrics, they need some colours and things. So what I've bought is, is some, some I think they're nearly all cotton spandex, but in some colours. So there was that one. So yeah, I was sort of thinking I could use a dark pink. 
I could use a black, a yellow, even a turquoise fabric with that. And then I've got this one, which is a, just a really nice fuchsia pink, which is, believe me, it's been a it's been a colour that I have worn quite a bit in my life and enjoyed wearing a lot. It's a very jolly colour. You know, when it when I lived in Ireland and the weather was really, really rubbish a lot of the time and it was really dark and overcast, I used to find that by wearing bright colours sometimes, I, I it was like the, the light reflected up off my face off my clothes and it used to make me feel happier so I've always remembered that but and this color is one that I used to wear a lot so I will try it again that one's got a kind of a bit of a sort of a crinkle I've washed these but I haven't ironed them can you see it's got a sort of a crinkly thing going on that that one I might just make a top or a t-shirt then there's this one which is also I probably wouldn't make a top out of this but I would like to use it for making one of those tops you know mixing it with something else and this I liked this you know I obviously do like teal colors I liked this one so much and it was such good value that I bought three meters in order to be able to make a dress now I have just bought the Sybil illusion skirts in the uh, Friday deal that they have and I had gone past that pattern a couple of times before when it sort of come up on special because I almost never wear skirts. In fact, I think I own one skirt. But when I saw my myself on video in that dress that I've made with a, a, a top and a, it looks like a top and a skirt, I thought, you know, it actually looks better than I think. I think I can probably wear a skirt as long as I get the proportions right and the length right. So... When the, so just then the Sybil Illusion skirts came up and I thought, you know, that's such a good pattern for knits and it goes with the te Tessa sheath dress, which I have already got but not made too. So I might make one of these to try out of this, um, to, to try it out and um, see if I can get the proportions right. Oh, and mustn't forget to tell you that, of course, I will be clipping a piece of these fabrics I'll put them into my folder my fabrics folder um, it's just on pieces of card that I found some old folders that I had and I just clipped them to pieces of card I've got them in a sort of a rough order I don't worry too much I I really live by the adage don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good but I do find this plus my pattern book that I have is great for when you're I'm sort of sitting there musing what, what things I might like to make, <laughs> as we so is do. Because actually, you know, all of it is part of the hobby and all of it is part of why we do it and what we love about it. And I think we should fully immerse ourselves in every bit of pleasure we can get out of our hobby. Which brings me to something. Miss Shu Makes, um, I'll put her link to the video below. She talked about how much she likes to sew because I think she's a retired lady and her and her husband, you know, after they've had their dinner, they go off in their separate directions, which I completely understand. I'm here on my own uh, today because my husband's gone tramping, but that is a good thing because, you know, I'm now working part-time, he works part-time. We spend a lot of time together, so it's good if we're not always together. Um, yeah, but she said like she loves to go off and do a bit of sewing in the evening on her own. And she loves that kind of alone time and, you know, in her own little world. And I think I'm sure also is can completely relate to that. And I like that a lot, too. I am. She said, I think sewists are often quite solitary people. Do you think that's true? It certainly is true for me. I want to be able to go to more places to wear my clothes and maybe get out a bit more. So I'm going to think more about that. But yeah, I, d I think you'd need to be quite a solitary person to enjoy sewing so much because unless you've got a sewing buddy, you're in a sewing group, which, which would be a great thing. There has to be a way of doing this YouTubing as a group thing where we could all feel like we're sewing together. Okay, here we are. So I have completed the, I made a muslin for this one. This is the adult 
Undercover Hoodie by Ellie and Mac. I think I bought this pattern for a dollar. And the idea of it was to try and use up some of my scraps, but actually this pattern isn't as good as you might think. I Because, well, in the end, that's why I couldn't find enough scraps. Because what you've got here is a front and a back, and then you've, you could have a two part sleeve, but in the end, because I've only just used this fabric, I've just made a one. And this piece here is basically a whole other piece that goes on the front. So there isn't a seam up here. The idea being that you have a little pocket in here, which, and, and I have followed the right, it's in the right place. Well, I find that a bit of an odd place to put a pocket, especially the pocket that goes right down there. However, I suppose if you wanted to pretend to be a kangaroo, it might be quite useful. <laughs> a pregnancy pocket. I think if I was going to put a pocket in, and as you know, I am not a big fan of pockets, I would probably put a pocket right down there, and you could actually put one in there if you really wanted to. But anyway, you could also just put, put a seam up there. Now, <laughs> this is a muslin, and I finished it because I always try and finish my muslins and even if I don't like them, I'll give them away. Um, so this was for fit. Now, what size did I make? Let me look here. I think, I don't think I lengthened it at all and that was number one issue. Remember, I'm five foot eight. <laughs> I actually turned this, this white band over again because it's too flimsy. So, but you know, it's not like I'm lacking length here. I mean, which is quite good really, because it's a tunic, I can wear it with wear leggings. I uh, I actually quite like it, um, and I think I will wear it. There's something kind of jolly about it. So what size did I make? I made XXL, yes, I've made size XXL, and I've done it all the way around, which is one of the problems. So size XXL has come out fairly big. Now obviously the stretch in your fabric is going to make a big difference but look at where the shoulder seam is. It's here. It's right off my shoulders and as I say the, the sleeves which I didn't, I didn't lengthen it and I didn't lengthen the sleeves because this is really a muslin. As you can see the sleeves were ridiculously long as well. In fact I've actually Hem, hem them back a bit so that they're a bit shorter so the sleeves of course the sleeves are ridiculously long because the shoulders are off um so i can probably go down to size xl for, for the next one although i'm always a bit wary i might cut x xl up here and xxl down here because you can always take some fabric in i find if you get the shoulders right then you can always take in a little excess fabric you might have at the sides. Um, it's better to be too big than too small, but uh, but the shoulders, yeah, they are they're wrong. However, oh, and this piece here, I put it on the other way round, just as a kind of a, a you know <laughs> design idea. But actually, the stretch is this way. It's got widthway stretch and not much lengthway stretch, so it doesn't quite behave. The way the rest does but hey i think it's okay um yeah so there's the fit one let's not look too closely at the cuffs the uh, the rib this rib that i've got i think it must have been like um what do you call that it's like vest material cotton vest material it has nowhere near enough structure so you know let's not look too closely because i probably shouldn't have used that but hey this was a muslin right <laughs> Yes, so what else have I been doing? Well, I have been out charity shopping and there are often patterns there, but they're often really, really old, like 80s type patterns, sometimes even older than that. And, and not often in bigger sizes either. Um, often, you know, in, only in the small size range or like a size 10 or 12 or 14. But over the past few weeks, I have managed to collect a few patterns um, there's this one, quick sew, it's a pinafore, I'm, as I say I've been wearing my Upton pinafore and I'm kind of interested to see whether I could make a pinafore that uh, might be a little different, do you think that the only thing is it does kind of look a little bit dated but I guess it's the way you wear it. Um, then we've got Simplicity 
9016. Now the reason I picked this up, I'm going to have to grade it up a little bit and I can probably do that by you making the biggest size and having a full bust adjustment. Quite like that little sort of over cardigan and even the little bags are sweet and I mean these are 50 cent patterns, that one's untouched. As, as you've probably heard me say, you don't generally get big four patterns very cheap here. So, you know, to be able to buy them like this is amazing. This one hasn't been touched either. This this looks like it might be 80s. 9889, simplicity. An easy one. Um, yeah, quite a nice sort of flowy coat. <sighs> yeah. And then there's this one, which is in the bigger sizes. Simplicity 4221. Um, have been thinking about skirts. I bought the Sybil Illusion skirt pattern and uh, that's a, but that's a knit pattern. This one would be a woven. So, and I do quite like the blouses that go with it. You know, I mean, the fact is I'm going to have to alter these patterns, do full bust adjustments and things. But hey, if I only pay 50 cents for it, then fine. What I won't do is generally pay $18 for a pattern and then have to do lots of adjustments on it. And then there's this one, the McCall's one. Um, I bought this pink boucle. I showed it, I think, in the last video. And I thought, oh, that would be a great pattern to make make. A little jacket in the pink boucle but now I'm look at it's got needs more fabric than I thought so I might not have enough oh, I might be able to buy a little bit more of that pink boucle this one I bought the, this one for the jacket and as I say another one this is a to simplicity 2662 and that's also size 18 to 24 and um, yeah a, it's actually a dress trousers and the jacket and the jacket I really like with those tucks and I was thinking you know might be quite easy to put a full bust adjustment in by adding another tuck in the top there um yeah I must admit you've probably not seen me make that many big full patterns but um some of that's because I can't get them and some of that's because I've always been found it really difficult to understand their instructions I hope I'm getting a little bit more experience now and I shouldn't have too much trouble. Oh, another thing I, I got, especially, you know, after I was harvesting zips, I managed to find one, an open-ended huge zip for 50 cents in the charity shop. So do you find that you uh, end up with a lot of stuff? I mean, I, this is a bit of a problem for me with creativity because keep too much stuff and to be quite intentional about what I keep but my hobbies like art and sewing and all they actually do require materials and because also I'm kind of want to sew sustainably and use secondhand things wherever possible that makes it even more difficult because you've actually got to have this stuff on hand you can't just go down to the shop and be sure to buy it you've got to collect it so yeah it does mean that um, I'm sort of um, I think I'm probably getting towards, you know, peak stuff. I've certainly got quite a lot of fabric, so um, maybe I need to sort of have a little mini fabric ban on myself or something. <laughs> Do you have that problem as well? Um, yeah, I, I've really been enjoying Hales, Hales Moore's um, videos about decluttering. I can really relate to to her, um, although I think she's got a really small space to sew in, I think she's doing really well actually, but I know what you mean, you know, when you've got too much, when you're looking at too much stuff and you can't put it anywhere, it does really get in the way of your creativity. So all of those patterns I will photograph now and I will put them in my pattern book so that I know all of the patterns that I've got. So I should be able to look through my folder with all the fabrics in and my my patterns here all I need to do is dedicate a little bit more time to sewing <laughs> um just before I go I must show you these floor cubes that I was making do you remember I made this floor cube and it turned out to be absolutely huge I could hardly pick it up because actually the weight of all this cut up fabric inside was massive so what I would do is make a smaller one and um I think it's there's 60 by 60 centimeters I'm not can't remember what the depth is, but I made two covers, so they're actually only the the under covers. Um, I'm going to obviously make a, a cover to go on top, and the idea is you can use them 
to sit on the floor or you can stack them and use them as a poof or whatever. I really like the look of them. Um, but I find that I have got some more fabric to cut up. It's surprising just how much cut up fabric these floor, cu floor cubes use. So, but yeah, in the getting from the big one, I had to unpack all the stuff I put in the big one and put it into the small one. And this was the result. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So that's the results of my creative week. I hope you have also been having a creative week. Do let me know what you're working on at the moment, what projects you're doing. I guess, um, I know I have some New Zealand viewers. So if you are a New Zealand viewer, what, what winter stuff are you making? And if you're from the Northern Hemisphere, I would love to know what you're making too. Because, you know, I think it's by sharing I, I think that's why I'm sort of t talking about my patterns and things because I actually find that it's the little asides and the little things people say that often mean the most to me and make me sort of make my creativity light up. So I hope that you are, are heading into a nice creative week. What have you got on your sewing table? Do let me know and I will see you next time, hopefully next week if I can get my act together. But uh, yeah, happy sewing in the meantime. Do take care of yourself. Bye. Come on, let's what? have your opinion then. Come and give us your opinion. No. He actually said, come on, what did you just say? Huh? What did you say? Huh? What did you just say? It's quite good. Well, quite nice. <laughs> come on into the camera. No, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stripe oh, it was just in my stash. I thought I'd use it to make a, a top, you know, make something out of. It's a bit flimsy.